distinguished member, Bruce Burnett. You've spent time in this town in Stillwater. You've, you've coached here. You've coached everywhere around the country. When you walk into these halls, did you, did you ever think that your name would be enshrined in this place one day? No. Never thought that. Never uh, anticipated it. Never had a goal to make it happen. You know, I just happen to be blessed to be around so many greats that, have, that are in this hall. I mean, they're already here. They've already been distinguished. And uh, I just had the, the opportunity and the blessing to work with those guys. And so uh, I just followed them. <laughs> when, it come, when you look at your career, I mean, you're, you're in here mostly for your, your coaching acumen. But as a competitor, you, you, you won a lot of matches in your day. Talk about the, the transition from athlete to coach and when maybe that, that switch flipped to realize that, hey, I might actually be a better coach than I was a wrestler. Well, yeah, there's no question about that. But what I will also be able to say, probably at 40 years old, I was probably a better wrestler than I was at 18 or 25 or, you know, because of learning and being able to understand. And the opportunity to start with kids wrestling, to go to high school wrestlers, to go, go to Oklahoma State University, uh, where John Smith had already won his first title and be in the room with Mike Sheets and Kenny Monday, uh, and, and see the impact that those athletes had on a Kendall Cross and a Chris Barnes and a, a Corey Bays, and, and see the progression there. And uh, because I am somewhat of a sponge and a lover of the sport, uh, I indulge myself in the learning, and I can tell you for a fact, working with Tommy Chesbro and being in the room with John and Mike and Kenny and seeing the technique and the things that go on, I learned so much from Tommy Chesbro in two years in my coaching technical aspect that, um, you know, I just loved it, and so I embraced it, and I learned and continued to learn, and I... I think that's what really gave me the opportunity to be blessed to, first off, it's divine intervention. It's nothing that I did. I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, God had his hand on me and directed me and gave me opportunities that so many other coaches would have done as well or better, I can say. They just didn't have the opportunity. I was the one that had the opportunity. And to be here in Stillwater and then moved to Colorado Springs and work on the national level. It was all uh, all good. But my learning curve from being an athlete to coaching was all about learning and loving it and spending it, you know, not the three months out of the year, but the 12 months out of the year, maybe take two weeks away from it. Uh, so that, that really was a transition. I wanted to learn and I wanted to give the athletes I ever coached on the high school level, uh, NCAA level, world and Olympic level, just give them an opportunity to get better, to get better. And th this is for any career, <laughs> anybody's job, if you're passionate about what it is you wanna do, it's not an overnight thing, it is a process. And you have to be on that process and have goals and dreams. So when you wake up every day, you know the direction that you're headed. There's a road map and parking places along the way every time, everywhere, every career, every job. But be steadfast. Think about the process. It's not going to happen overnight. And if it does, you better be careful because it's not going to happen again. A, you got to take the statistics and the averages into it and, and really look at the opportunities that you have. Take advantage of them. Get better. Talk about the opportunities. When we were we were on the same trip and at the Junior Worlds in Pattaya in 2012, and that was kind of the moment we hadn't really been around you enough to see how you coach, but just looking at how you're talking to the athletes, just analyzing t analyzing the video of who's coming up next. And at the time, you'd come off your career at the Naval Academy, so you've got that ability to adapt to your situation. So I guess explain what it was like to adapt your coaching style going from high school to college national team back to coaching kids at a national team thing and and kind of melding them all together because the way you coach kids at navy is not the way you coach kids on the national team no well i'm gonna i'm gonna correct that just a little bit actually that's what i had to do but that was hard to do first off 
what you have to understand is an NCAA athlete's going to have 40, 45 matches. How do you prepare for each one of those individually over the time span that you have? You can't really do it. And so really, um, you, you prepare for some key matches during the year. For example, when I was at the Naval Academy, this will sound strange to some people, but the most important thing was to beat Army. That's it. And uh, everything else we want to do, but if I was going to keep a job, we had to beat Army. That's the nature of the business, and I loved it. I loved that aspect of it. So from the first day of preparation... Just don't lose to Air Force, because that's, that's a non-starter right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Actually, Bachman, back in the day, he dominated the academies. Wayne Bachman did. So uh, we did have to overcome them when I first got in. But that was part of it. I mean, that was really the challenge on every level. And so to take an individual athlete on a junior world team that you're with maybe 10 days before the competition and then you have that time. What I tried to do was focus on one or two things. You know what? You're really weak here so in this 10 days we're going to make this better because if you can't defend this gut wrench and you hit these three guys that are really good with gut wrenches the odds of you getting on the podium are not good. Now, maybe you get a good draw, and they're all on the other side, and the gut wrench never comes into play. But let me tell you, you better be prepared for this. Now, you're good in, on your feet. Your counter offense is good, but in parterre, you're bad. So that was the focus. And so what I'm going to say is individual athlete and individual training, I would say, was the key to my success on the elite level and then... Even at uh, the Naval Academy, uh, and somewhat here at Oklahoma State as well, but there were so many things that had to come into play that uh, we had great athletes, but great athletes, they can lose, and that's where coaching comes in. But to win on the collegiate level, to win on the elite level, you have to have great athletes, and I was blessed to work with the best. Well, and in a place like the Naval Academy, you get the cream of the crop in terms of academics and kind of the total package. But not everybody that comes to wrestle for the Naval Academy is is the best of the best when it comes to wrestling. You might have a guy that was a middling 500 kid, but he has his through the roof great leadership skills, and he's going to be on your roster. So how do you, with that that experience in coaching the elite here in Stillwater and the national team, to a kid that was maybe a high school starter? that's at the Naval Academy in a Division One room. How do you coach that kid in a manner that you give them everything you have the way you coach, say, a Bruce Baumgartner or, or, or Kurt Angle? Okay, I'm going to go right back to this. So what's the number one goal? Beat Army. <laughs> okay. okay. And so I take that individual and I take the opponent from Army. And uh, in November, I look at the Army strengths. I look at our strengths, our weaknesses compared to theirs and get to work fixing those first. Because they're weak, those same weaknesses are going to occur whether they're wrestling Edinburgh or Iowa or whoever. So we tried to wrestle a tough schedule. But my focus, yeah, I always work from the end back. The NCAA championships, but for us, it was Army dual back, everything bonus after that, EIWA, and the preparation from that. But your strengths and weaknesses... That's where you have to start. I mean, that's, you don't just start with the big picture. We don't start with stance and motion unless the guy can't move his feet. If he can move his feet, this guy doesn't have to work so much on stance and motion. And make no mistakes, there's, there's a list of 15 things that every wrestler has to be good at. But in those 15 things, maybe five of them, they're not so good at. And those are the five things that you have to focus on. And so... That's what it comes down to, individual coaching. And I can tell you right now that the two weeks prior to the Army duel, we had individual practices. We didn't have a team practice. We had individual practices that were encompassed by their prep period, by their lunch hour, different times of the evening, different. And the preparation was, these are the things, this is what your opponent's gonna do in this position. And let's see how you are and we'll just fix this position, this position, this position. And so I'm just going to say we were able to flip some big time losses that we had into wins at the dual meet based on fixing a few things 
in comparison. And it's the same on the world level. I mean, Kevin Jackson didn't have to prepare for 35 guys at the world championships. Kevin Jackson had to prepare for three guys because the other 32, he was just going to beat. <laughs> it didn't matter. And so, but those three guys, they, they, those three guys were a problem for a reason based on what Kevin did and what they did. And so that was the approach. I think it's a huge part of wrestling. And Let's go back to when, you're, when your competitive career ends and then you start coaching. What drew you to coaching? Um, well, I actually started off in police science. I uh, thought I might be a policeman. And after the first two semesters of doing that, I realized, holy cow, I could pull somebody over for a ticket and get shot? I don't know if I want to do this job. And so from there, my passion was, and I think, divine intervention and God's guidance, he directed me where I was... Uh, we all have different gifts and different talents. And so uh, wrestling I loved, and I was blessed with the opportunity to continue it. And uh, so that's it. That's how I ended up coaching. So going back to your career at Idaho State, they, they, even though they haven't had a program in a long time, they recently put out a press release about your induction here. What was your time like at Idaho State as a competitor? Oh, listen. Have you ever been to Idaho? I've driven into about two miles and turned around and came back to say I've been there. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. First off, I love the outdoors. I love to hunt and fish. Um, and when the coach from Idaho State called me and asked me where I thought I might go to school, I was leaning towards Colorado somewhere. I had three offers from three different schools in Colorado. And he said, well, why would you want to go there? And I said, well, I love to hunt and fish. I love the outdoors. He said, well, let me tell you what. Our deer, we don't want. We run down to Colorado, and our fish eat their fish. <laughs> he didn't miss a beat, and I thought, well, yeah, maybe I should see Idaho. And he said, that's what I've been trying to tell you. He uh, said, have you ever heard of Yellowstone Park? I said, well, yeah, of course. He says, well, we're two hours away from Yellowstone Park, and, you know, it's a great outdoors. And after my visit catching big fish and enjoying the outdoors. Uh, my time at Idaho State was just a blessing for me and really helped my coaching career and moving in. So, yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah, wrestling, uh, Big Sky Country and the Big Sky Conference at the time, I mean, a lot, of, lot more programs back then. And competitively, what was it like looking at the landscape of college wrestling in that era? Well, no, no internet, you had amateur wrestling news, that was pretty much how you got your news. So what, what was your knowledge going into your college career about the world of wrestling? Well, I, I'm going to say uh, uh, I was blessed to be around Joe C. Joe C. was a coach at South Bakersfield High School when I was a wrestler at North Bakersfield High School. But Joe C. was training for world and Olympic teams as a high school coach. But I was one of his main workout partners. Although I was a rival high school athlete, he would call me and say, you want to fight? I need to work out. And so that was a taste for me. I actually traveled with him and went to some Olympic trials when I was a high school athlete when he was trying to make things. And so I, I actually did have a little bit of a connection that way. But you're right. So I'm going to tell you, Amateur Wrestling News, Carl or uh, Bobby Douglas's book, The Takedown. I mean, that's how I learned a lot of wrestling. That's what I'll say. I mean, I just followed it and studied it. And, um, you know, you can go back. I wish that I would have put more time into the wrestling part of it like I did into the future. Uh, but. Got to remember, I was in the great outdoors and loved to hunt and fish. And so there were a lot of times I was changing out of my waders into my wrestling gear when I probably should have spent some more time on the mat. When you take all that into consideration, that opportunity to coach the national team arises. Now, you had been in a couple spots before and, and training with the, you know, elite athletes here in Stillwater. When, when you, what, what possessed you to apply for that position, first off, that, that, thought, that you thought, like, I can do this? Well, I, I, it's it's long story, so we don't have time. But Myron Roderick, I was doing a clinic. Myron Roderick was on the same bill with me. I'd never met Myron Roderick. Two days into our clinic, 
We had coaches for one day, kids for two days. My second day, he asked me, Leroy, he said, Bruce, Leroy Smith's going to Switzerland. He's leaving. How'd you like to come to Oklahoma State and be the head assistant? I'm like, what's that pay, Myron? He said, $20,000 a year. I said, $20,000? I'm making $40,000 now. How can I do that? I can't do that. He said, well, I'll give you a car, gas credit card. You do camps. You're going to do fine. I'm like, nah, I can't do it. Go back home. High school, talked to a football coach, good friend of mine. He says, let me tell you something, Bruce. The University of Oklahoma offered me a job. I'd pay him $20,000 so I could go. Started thinking about it. Called Myron Roderick and said, Myron, is that offer still available? And I, I hadn't talked to Joe C. yet, who was the head coach. I hadn't talked to him. He goes, yep. I said, you fly me out, take a look at it, talk to Joe. He said, yep. Flew out. That was my start, really from high school to international to be in the room with John, Mike Sheets, Kenny Monday, Tom Erickson, Kendall Cross, Chris Barnes, Tommy Chesbro. That, that's the avenue. That gave me the confidence that when I went to USA Wrestling, working with John, Kenny, Mike, understanding even the best guys, boy, you, you got to get better. How do you get better? What's your weakness? What's your strength? What do you, that was our focus. What does your opponent do? What, you you got to get down to the minutia when you get on that level versus this big picture thing, right? So that gave me the confidence. When I got to USA Wrestling the first year as a national developmental coach and was able to all of a sudden have this library of video for the very best wrestlers ever, I mean, I might be there still at 11 o'clock at night watching video. I, I kid you not. It's, I mean, I just loved it. Like, why, why is this guy so good? Why? why is Fid, what makes Fadzayev so, so much better? What's, what's Uregan? What How did he win? What, and so... How did he get put together like that? <laughs> well, no. Look at our athletes. I mean, we've got some athletes, you know. You know, strength, balance, flexibility... Uh, those things that come into play, speed, I mean, we have the athletes. What, they, what our athletes sometimes don't understand is what technical skills fit their physical skills. It, it, I mean, Kendall Cross shooting the low single legs was the dumbest thing he had ever done. On a collegiate level, he could get it on 80% of the athletes. On the international level, he might get it on 50% of the athletes, and the rest of the times they scored on him. So come on, wake up, stop shooting that. You know, where are you good? What, where do you need to be? What positions do you have to be in to win? And so that learning curve and watching the best guys, watching hours of videotape for 10 years. Look, I, I had probably 300 VHS tapes, VHS tapes, start, stop, push. It's a real, real beta cam. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy time, but that's how I learned. Now, that was my time. This has been a special weekend for 40 plus years, Honors Weekend. And coming off COVID, you got an opportunity to finally go in. We're, we're you know, a year and change after the actual uh, call that you got. And then having worked next to this building in the early oh. part of your career, what's it like to actually walk through these building, these, these hallways and, and realize that my name is not just my name's going to be up there. I'm going to be in granite. I'm going to be in that room. That To be a distinguished member is one of the highest orders of the sport can give. What's it mean to you? Yeah, so here's what I want people to understand. One, it's not about me. It's never been about me. I've been blessed with the opportunity to be around people and push for excellence that maybe got me to be here. But boasting about myself Mm -mm. divine intervention that my Lord Jesus Christ actually gave me the opportunities in the path to make this so. I just had to follow the path. And again, looked at my gifts and my skills and my talents and then love with a passion what I did. And so here I am in National Wrestling Hall of Fame. One of the great minds of the sport. Congratulations on your induction, sir. Thank you much.